channel. My name is Talia. I'm an artist and interior stylist in Los Angeles and I help people create more beautiful and functional spaces with an emphasis on those of us who are blessed to live in small homes. I am really excited to be filming this video today. It's the first video on my new channel and I thought it would be appropriate because I hope to spend some time talking about home decor and interior styling art and plants and small space solutions that we took tour of my apartment as our first video uh, so you can get to know me through my style. Um, so a little bit of background, I live in a 500 square foot studio in Hollywood. Uh, I've lived here for 10 years, actually 10 years as of August that just passed, which is crazy that I've lived anywhere for 10 years because I'm not a day over 26. 26 that's what we're going with okay um i really love this place um it's really well located the design of it the layout works really great and over the last decade i've been able to make it into something that is really comfortable and works well for me and i'm excited to show you around there will be a link down in the description uh that has a page on my website that lists everything so if you want to shop anything that you see here um you should be able to find it on that link so do check that out if you have any questions or comments leave them down in the comments you guys know how YouTube works if you're here um, and if you like the video I hope that you will subscribe stick around like the video like actually like it or dislike it you know let me know so you know analytics all analytics are good um, anything else that I can say to extend this intro and any longer I don't think so let's get started Okay, so when you first walk into my front door, you're greeted by my entryway. Um, one of my biggest tips for anyone living in a small space is to have clearly defined zones of living. So I do my work here, I lounge here, I eat here, I go to bed here. It really makes you feel like you're maximizing and getting the most of your space when you have different areas to do different things. Um, I accomplished my entryway by just putting down a table in front of the door with enough space for the door to open. It's actually a laptop stand from Ikea that I spray painted gold. So now we move into my main living space, which is separated from the bedroom area by my favorite Ikea product. This is a Calax. It's an OG Ikea solution, and I love it for small spaces because it solves two of our major problems. Number one, if you're looking to divide a living area from a bedroom area and a studio, Presto, the Calax does that for you. It also provides a ton of storage options so I've got everything from office supplies to emergency equipment to uh, towels to laundry I actually use two of these pull-out drawers on the Calax to keep my dirty clothes so I don't have to have a hamper anywhere it's an absolute fantastic product they make them in different sizes so on the other part of the living space, my plants are obviously the star of the show. I'm going to make a separate video about plant collecting and plant care and kind of a mini plant tour. But just in general, I think that plants are a fantastic item of decor. They bring so much liveliness to a space. And I think if you're a decor minimalist, like you don't want any art, you don't want any rugs or really vibrant furniture, a really elegant plant, a statement plant, a beautiful monstera, or maybe like a plant wall, something really luscious. I think that could be a great decor option. The table that the plants are sitting on is one of my other favorite items of furniture. It's tempered glass and I got it from Ikea. I was really nervous at how it would ship, like if it would arrive in one piece, but it did, thankfully. And I love it because it allows me to create kind of a faux effect for some of my plants on the floor. They would normally live at the floor of the jungle and kind of receive that dappled sunlight with the canopy from above. So I'm recreating that for my plants to varying degree, varying degrees of success, relative success. I really like this table, actually all three of the tables that are kind of in this area because they don't take up a lot of 
visual space, which is another really great trick if you live in a small home. Furniture that you can see through from the top to the ground, from the sides to the wall. It allows you to have surface area, surface space, but it also takes up less visual space than if you had a kind of clunky wooden coffee table or heavier piece like a storage bench that you couldn't see through. The coffee table is also great because it's a nesting coffee table. So if I have company over, I can. <laughs> what am I talking about? I have company over, girl. Anyway, when I could have company over, um, it's really easy to unnest the tables, be able to bring one table over to the other side of the room. I always like when I'm hosting a party, even though this is a small space, I like to create two like separate zones in this room for people to have separate conversations. And I love to be able to provide a space for people to put their food in their cups and I always like to have enough seating for everyone at the party to be set at the same time. So it's really great to be able to take the, un the coffee tables, unnest them, and get that extra surface space for hosting without taking up extra space in my house when I'm not. The couch is from Wayfair. It's not very comfortable. If you live in a small home, sometimes, you know, it's down to just finding something that fits the space physically. And this does. Visually, I like the way it looks, but it definitely is not comfortable to sit on for long periods of time. So, you know, you live and you learn. So behind the couch, I built a little console table just out of some spare parts of wood. And I like to use that area to display some of my artwork. I'm a ceramic artist and I like to put up my art here for me to enjoy for a little while before I sell it. So I'm just having those up for display. Uh, shameless plug, but those pieces from my collection faces will probably be up for sale on my website in December, early December. So check that out. Um, behind it is just some canvases. I've had these canvases for years. I've painted them and repainted them. I wanted something that brought your eye up to the ceiling as soon as you walked into the door, but I didn't want to do anything too colorful because I'm able to now swap about the art in front and change the pillowcases and decor on the coffee table. I do think I'm going to be switching out this look though. I've had this gray background for a while and I'm going to be doing videos in the future on how to make your own statement art so stay tuned for that. Uh, but I definitely think I'm going to be swapping this out. I'm feeling orange like I really feel an orange time of life coming on so I think that's what we're going to be going with. <laughs> When we turn around from the living room, we're facing one of my favorite views in the apartment, which is the bar. So I guess if I had any sense, this would be where I put my laptop. Um, but it feels more like in line with who I am as a person to have a dedicated bar area instead of somewhere for my computer to live. So. Hi, I'm Talia, it's nice to meet you. Tray, the bar tray, is one of my favorite decor items in the whole house. My spirit cannot resist shiny gold faux croc embossed anything. I think they also have this in black matte if you like the look but you aren't as tacky as I am. So on the wall behind the bar are some of my favorite art pieces. I've got an original from my friend Mark Dellis. I've got a lithograph from 1974. Um, I've got some prints, one from Society6 and one from another friend of mine. And the space at the end is for a painting that I'm working on, an oil on canvas painting that hopefully will be finished sometime this century <laughs> like I've, I've made almost no progress on it in like six months so we'll see one of the things that my design studio does is source art for people so i give you a quiz i find out what kind of art style you have and then i source a variety of different pieces different mediums and hopefully help bring some i don't know cool pieces you wouldn't have found on your own into your house the desk again ikea 
a really generous drawer which I actually used to keep my laptop in and then I love that there's visible storage and hidden storage in this desk I think it's a really good incorporation again for those of us who are in small spaces and looking for different storage solutions visible storage and hidden storage crucial and you should be using both when you can and the bench underneath the bar table is one that I actually made myself. More adventures in woodworking. Uh, it was inspired by a video here on YouTube from The Rehab Life. I will link the video down below if you're interested in doing your own bench. Definitely follow her instructions and measure things and do a little better than I did. The bench looks great. It's a little wobbly because uh, you're supposed to measure twice and cut once. Once you cut, you're done. So I learned that the hard way, but I've got a, a lovely looking bench. I DIY'd the cushion as well. Um, it looks great. And I'm the only one that's sitting on it right now. So there you go. So now we're moving into the bedroom where the magic happens. Eight full hours of sleep every night thanks to five milligrams of melatonin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first thing you notice when you come into my bedroom is my major style faux pas. I've got this rug on the floor that is way too small for the space. Ideally, in a space like this, you'd want the rug to extend out underneath the furniture. I actually don't mind the way the rug looks. That decor tip definitely is helpful, and you definitely have seen some instances where having a rug too small in a space just cuts the space off. But I actually work out in this area, so moving that rug off the floor for me to put my yoga mat or my transformer ball down is much easier than having to like move furniture to get a larger rug out of the way. The dresser is my favorite Ikea upcycle in the whole apartment. It is inspired by a uh, DIY video from Drew over at the Lone Fox. I'll link that video down below as well. The actual dresser is a Tarva. It's their unfinished pine series at Ikea, so really good quality. And then it's just covered in wallpaper and painted and it looks really, really great. Again, another DIY that I didn't do the best job on, but it kind of looks like a little bit shabby, faux, vintage, shabby chic-esque. Against the back wall, I have these seats from Ikea. I love the blue velvet and the gold tones that are just being carried throughout the space. And this is also where I'd set up the second kind of seating area when I'm having a party. So this smaller coffee table, after I unnest it, it would go over in this area. And then people could decide whether they wanted to bring my bench from underneath the table or one of my chairs from the kitchen and put it next to the couch or put it in that area depending on where the conversation leads. So my bed is behind yet another DIY woodworking table that I created since the apocalypse started and I've been home with nothing to do since March. Um, I think I already mentioned that I really, really love and appreciate separate defined spaces if you live in a small home. And I used to have a curtain rod that hung on the ceiling that I could pull and draw clothes to completely separate my bedroom from the rest of the space. I replaced that a few months ago actually with this table and even though there's less of the opportunity to completely close off the bedroom space like I can't pull a curtain and visually completely block the bed from the rest of the room I actually do like the way it looks behind the table a little more. I think it looks neater. Uh, I think the bed looks more recessed behind a piece of furniture that's on the floor. And even though I'm losing a little bit of floor space, obviously a table on the ground takes up more space than a curtain hanging from the ceiling. I think I gain a lot visually from this. Also, I have surface area to put knickknacks and decor items so I really think that's a win-win and sometimes in a small space you have to give up 
there's a trade-off. You have to give up space for the right look. So now we move into my office slash closet slash I don't technically have a hallway in my apartment but if I did this would be the hallway. This space was the hardest and easiest for me to figure out and design. Easiest because I knew I wanted to have a standalone area for my desk to live, for me to put up my like crazy person post-it wall. And this is the only space in my house to do that since I'm using this area here as a bar and I don't want to have to like convert anything on my dining room table. This used to be my vanity. So I just took down the mirror and the lights off the wall. I moved all of my skincare and beauty items into the top two drawers of my dresser. And I upgraded my chair to this really beautiful, cool blue office chair, which I absolutely love. What became difficult is that this is also my closet. And I knew I wanted to use this back sliding door on the closet as kind of like a working space. So I've got everything from my vision board to to-do list, my goals, business plans, and they're all taped onto that door. And so what that means is for me, company ready, film ready in this space is going to be closet doors open so that I can have one door stacked behind the other and you can see how many times I've got shirtless Henry Cavill on my vision board to represent the ideal man even though I've been hopelessly single for 300 years. So that created the additional problem that now you're going to be able to see into my closet when you're here because the closet doors are open so now the closet has to look nice which it did not before. So I was really inspired by all of the YouTubers and Instagrammers who have those beautiful walk-in closets with the wall of shoes and the island in the center with all their sunglasses and accessories. I wanted to create a mini that in this little slice that you could see when you're walking past my closet. So first thing I did was swap out all of my hangers for these black velvet ones. Do that, honey, because that is a upgrade into the lap of the luxury for your closet. I added some touch lights. I built in a little shelf so I can display some of my um, jewelry and my sunglasses and I did some more woodworking. I built my own uh, shoe racks in the closet so I can fit all of my shoes in a way that looked semi-neat. I think this is the worst woodworking project in the whole apartment, but the shoes are still on the shelf. So I just hope people aren't looking that closely into the closet, but for the most part, I think it came out really great. So I think both spaces function really well. This space functions great for me as a closet, functions great for me as an office space. Neither one of the two are getting in the way of the other. And uh, I'm really glad that I was able to work it out. I feel very productive when I'm sitting at my little desk working on the computer. Although I think it's bad feng shui to face your laptop or your computer toward a wall. Um, but I'm working with what I got. <laughs> the art in this space is some of my favorite in the house. Uh, I've got these woodblock prints that I purchased on Venice. Uh, it was actually the first time I'd ever used uh, a swipe card to to purchase something, like a swipe thing in somebody's phone. And I was 100% sure that this hippie was about to steal my debit card information, but it turns out I just was not up on the latest technologies. Um, <laughs> the pool cue above that I stole. I had very good reason to steal the pool cue. I will tell you guys the story one day. Um, get me to 100,000 subscribers and I'll tell you the story. Assuming the statute of limitations is over because this place is still open and I don't want no smoke. <laughs> Apologies because the sun just shifted in like a major way. Um, so we're moving into my bathroom and the bathroom space is such an important space if you're in a small home. Uh, depending on the layout of your space, if you live in a studio or a bachelor, an efficiency, your kitchen could be open to the living space and your bathroom could be the only 
place in the entire home for you to go and close a door and be completely separate for the rest of the space. So I really would uh, recommend spending some time and energy and effort to making your bathroom a retreat someplace that's really tranquil always keeping it really neat and clean um, because it could literally be you know that one space for you to do that in your house and if, especially if you live with other people sometimes you might just find yourself sitting in the bathroom as a, a way to escape you know you want the bathroom to be nice <laughs> so I don't have a theme for any space in my house but if the bathroom did have a theme it would be the nice three-piece bathroom at the end of a hallway in a spa somewhere in Asia, but you don't know where in Asia. I absolutely love um, Asian art and architecture. I had the opportunity a few years ago to travel through Japan and Cambodia and Indonesia and Taipei and literally just spent days and days going to various different museums and walking through temples and cemeteries. I tried to incorporate as much of that uh, Asian reference and influence as I could into this space. So I used a lot of natural elements, bamboo floor mats, bamboo trays, the bust of the Buddha Sakyamuni, and all the art on the wall were actually uh, hanging scrolls I got from uh, a Chinese seller on eBay like six years ago. I paid one penny and $19.99 shipping and then uh, I just cut down the scrolls to these scenes that I wanted to frame because they were literally six feet tall, way too big for the space. The bathroom is also the only place I currently have plants hanging from the wall, hanging from the ceiling. It reminds me really of the hotel that I stayed at in Indonesia and I wanted to kind of create that like jungle vibe of the plants coming in on you from all sides but not in like a horrifying way, kind of in a tranquil way. Is there a tranquil way to do that? I feel tranquil in the bathroom so I think, yeah, I think there is. The table is actually uh, an Ikea lac TV stand which is a really great option for getting some surface space to put some decor on if you're looking to do that in a tiny bathroom. It's such a narrow piece of furniture. You've got a shelf so you can do some bathroom storage and it was like under 20 bucks. I think they're $15 at the time that I'm filming this, so you really cannot beat that. Location change because I have run out of sun in the living room. So welcome to the kitchen and welcome to the kitchen. Um, my kitchen is actually relatively large considering the overall size of the apartment. Uh, in the one bedroom apartments in this building, this space would be the bedroom and then they have a small galley kitchen off of the main living space. Now I would love to have a separate bedroom, but considering that this building does not have a laundry room, I prefer this layout better because the large kitchen allows me to have my panda portable wash and dryer tucked away behind the refrigerator and those are the two best items that I have purchased for my home ever at all. The number one greatest small space recommendation I can make for you in your home if you are looking to have a wash and dryer and you don't have the space for a traditional one or hookups for a traditional one. I have seen some shit in the laundromats in Hollywood, okay? <laughs> like, I have had people harass me, take my photographs secretly, or a, what an attempt at secrecy was, but you really can't when you're doing one of these. Like, I, I mean, I've seen comedy shows, fist fights, uh, I've seen a guy get robbed, I've seen an a na entirely naked man, entirely naked at the laundromat. I am really glad I have to, I don't ever have to step foot in another public laundromat. Uh, Panda washer and dryer saved the day. I'm going to be making a separate video. Uh, I've actually owned them for four years, so I'm going to be making a long 
term review of them and just all the different accessories and stuff that I can recommend but in case you couldn't tell does not come there's no higher recommendation from me if you're considering them or if you've never heard of portable washer and dryer they exist and you should get one immediately if not sooner you know I did all the painting in this house like everywhere that there's painting on the wall I did the painting and nowhere is that more obvious than here in the kitchen. Uh, painting is a profession that people can charge for for a reason. I <laughs> really love the green and the white. Um, I don't know if this would be considered wainscoting, but it was a pain in the ass to paint trying to keep the green exactly where I wanted it and the white only on the trim and not on either side like yikes uh but i love the look i love the look of the green and the white out of the corner of my eye when i'm walking to the bathroom and i see the green and the white wall and this cushion that i made i just reupholstered a storage bench that i had out in the living area and moved it in here i oscillate back and forth whether or not i love or hate the yellow but today i'm on love and then the trifecta of this look which is the curly willow branch i think branches tree branches are a really great elegant way to make a dramatic statement if you don't like flowers you don't want to take care of plants a uh, tree branch is going to be a lot uh lower maintenance i like to buy mine when they're already kind of dying so you don't have to spend days swooping up leaves but they still look good even as they're dying the dining room table is actually from ikea it was a four top and then with the addition of the storage bench it now seats six and I just replaced the chairs that it came with with these Eames inspired ones from Amazon. I think it looks a lot nicer and uh, a lot less Ikea. Like I love Ikea but you don't want everything to look like it comes from Ikea so that's a great way to do things. Get an inexpensive dining table and change out the chairs or vice versa. So if you hadn't kind of noticed already, my general aesthetic is I really, I'm a maximalist when it comes to like plants and art and decor and I like bright colors and all of that, but I don't like a lot of personal items or personal clutter around. So like you haven't seen a trash can anywhere, they're all hidden, I don't keep beauty products out in the bathroom. I don't keep a toothbrush and a cup in the bathroom. No hampers are visible. I don't keep a scale on the floor. Um, the kitchen, I would love to be able to clear the countertops in my kitchen and get all of the knives and all of the utensils into the cabinets, but I have not been able to accomplish that as of yet. I would also really love to get the microwave into one of the cabinets. Like I would drill a hole into the cabinets to get the cord out. If I can get a microwave that was small enough to fit into one of the cabinets. That's just kind of my aesthetic. That's like my preferred aesthetic. I don't think it'll be possible in the kitchen, unfortunately, but you know, I could try. The frames on the wall are from Ikea. They're from the Reba frame series. All of the frames on my wall, pretty much all of my art is framed in Ikea frames and 90% of those frames are the Reba frames. They're just clean. They come in a ton of different sizes. I personally like an eclectic range of art, but I like the frames to be really crisp and clean and uniform so again ikea to the rescue all right that's it guys you made it to the end of the video thank you so much for sticking with me i appreciate you because i know i was just like <laughs> if you like the video please do like it comment down below what your favorite piece of decor or artwork that you saw in my space was i'd love to know and if you are interested in more videos from me subscribe i'm gonna have new videos every wednesday next wednesday we're gonna be talking about plants so plant care 101 plant accessories that you'll need if you're starting your collection i'm gonna show you my plant collection and some of my favorite plants so i really hope to see you then um and that's it again thanks for watching all the way to the end if you have any questions leave them down in the comments 
Don't forget the link in the description box that has the list if you want to shop anything that you saw in the video. Um, that's it. Thanks again. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe. And until next Wednesday, bye. Thank you.